Armando Hasudungan Biology and Medicine videos, please make sure to subscribe, join the forum and group. For the latest videos, please visit Facebook Armando Hasudungan. And here, make sure to like, please. And you can also ask questions, answer questions, and please post some interesting things, such as artworks. And you can also change the quality settings, which I highly suggest, to the highest one, such as HD or 720 for better graphics. And in this video, we're going to talk about the diversity of antibodies and T-cell receptors, and actually how they become diverse and how they become highly specific for a particular antigen, you can say. So we begin uh, our journey in the bone marrow, which is within the bone. And in the bone marrow, we have a progenitor lymphoid cell, which comes from a stem cell in the bone marrow. Now, this progenitor lymphoid cell has um, can become two things. It can become a progenitor T cell or it can become a progenitor B cell. Now let's follow this life of a progenitor T cell first. This progenitor T cell will then migrate from the bone marrow into the thymus where T cell development occurs. So T cell development occurs in the thymus. The progenitor, progenitor T cell will become a naive T cell here. And it becomes a naive T cell through a process called somatic recombination or VDG recombination where, we'll, where it will obtain a unique T cell receptor which will bind to a specific antigen and so this increases the diversity and specificity of the T cell receptors. Now after the progenitor T cell has become the naive T cell and developed into the naive T cell through cytokines or whatnot, it will then migrate into the lymph nodes. Now let's go back to the progenitor B cell. The progenitor B cell will also undergo in the bone marrow, somatic recombination, also known as VDJ recombination. And through this recombination, it will become an immature B cell with a unique antibody, which will bind to a specific antigen. So through somatic recombination, it will obtain a unique type of antibody, usually immunoglobulin uh, M. And once this immature B cell has developed with an immunoglobin M, it will then migrate also into the lymph nodes. So both the, T, uh, the naive T cell and the immature B cell are in the lymph nodes. So let's have a look inside the lymph nodes. So here we have the immature B cell, which has matured, just become a mature B cell once it's entered the lymph nodes. And then we have the naive T cell. The naive T cell will become activated when an antigen presenting cell presents an antigen to the naive T cell. Once the antigen presenting cell, such as a macrophage or dendritic cell, presents an antigen to the naive T cell, the naive, naive T cell will begin to proliferate and differentiate. It will differentiate into a cytotoxic T cell or a T helper cell. The T helper cell can then activate the mature B cell, or alternatively, the mature B cell can become activated when it binds onto a pathogen, the antigen of the pathogen, or both. The T, help, the T helper cell or the antigen of the pathogen can both activate the mature B cell. Now within the lymph node, there is an area called a germinal center. And the germinal center consists of a dark zone and a light zone. When the mature B cell becomes activated, either from the T helper cell or the antigen of pathogen or both, the mature B cell will move into the germinal center, into the dark zone first, where it will undergo somatic hypermutation and then become a centroblast. So it will undergo somatic hypermutation. And what somatic hypermutation does, it causes mutations within the gene, which further increases the affinity, actually, and diversity, specificity of the antibodies of the, of the B cell. So the centroblast from the dark zone will then move into the light zone where it becomes a centrocyte. And then here in the light zone, it can undergo class switching and clonal expansion where it will differentiate and proliferate into either memory B cells or plasma cells, the antibody secreting cells. A point to make is that the centroblast and centrocytes are still the B cells, it's just that they're called different names. And also class switching basically involves when the immunoglobulin, which I just mentioned is usually IgM, can become IgE, IgA, etc. So this occurs in the germinal center. Now let's take back, let's take a look and go back to the progenitor B cell. 
and learn a bit more about the diversity of these antibodies. So we, have, so we begin with the progenitor B cell in the bone marrow, right? And the progenitor B cell through VDJ recombination or somatic recombination becomes immature B cells, each with a unique antibody which will bind to a specific type of antigen. And all of these immature B cells, they all have unique um, antibodies, right? So let's look at the antibody structure to appreciate the diversity of these um, molecules. So an antibody consists of a light chain, an orange here, and a heavy chain, the rest of it. And they're both connected through disulfide bonds. Another way of looking at the antibody, the same antibody in this, in this particular immature B cell, is that it contains a variable region, there's blue areas, also known as V regions, and a constant region. So here we have CCC, constants, and V. And also in the other diagram, we have CCC and VVV. As you can see, there are more constant regions on the heavy chain. Now what's important about an immunoglobulin structure, such as this one, is that the variable region has the unique binding site and has a unique binding site for a specific antigen. So the variable region is basically what determines what type of antigen it binds to. The constant region is essentially determines what class this immature B cell is. And usually, as I mentioned, immature B cells is usually immunoglobulin M. And so this constant region is an immunoglobulin M constant region. So let's have a closer look at what I mean by antibody diversity and how each of these immature B cells possesses a unique antibody which will bind to a specific antigen. Let's have a look at this particular immature B cell. Let's call this immature B cell B cell 6A2. Now B cell 6A2 cannot bind to this particular antigen because the V region of the antibody does not match that of the pathogen's antigen because as you can see this path pathogen number 2 has circular looking antigens whereas the binding site of the B cell has uh, has a triangular looking uh, V region, the binding site. Uh, the B cell 6A2 can also, can't also bind to this particular pathogen because the antigen is square looking and so does not fit into the variable region, the binding site. However, um, this, the B cell 6A2 can bind to this particular pathogen because this particular pathogen has triangular looking um, antigens which are complementary to the antibody's variable region, the antibody's binding site. And so as you can see, the, the antibodies are highly specific and so binds to a specific type of antigen. So let's look at this um, connection, the contact between antibody and antigen in a bigger picture. So here we have a pathogen with its um, spe specific type of antigen on it. And here we have the antibody. The antibody consisting um, of a light chain and heavy chain. The top portions are the variable regions and the rest are the constant regions. So here's the antibody and the V region contains the binding site which binds and latches, makes contact with the antigen of a pathogen. So let's have a closer look at this heavy chain of the antibody binding to the antigen. So here we have the structure, the, uh, the protein structure of the antigen of the pathogen. And here we have the heavy chain uh, variable region of the antibody. And the site of which the antigen binds or makes contact with the heavy chain binding site is known as the epitope. So the, so the epitope binds um, or makes contact with the binding site of the variable region, essentially. And that concludes the video on the diversity of antibodies and the T cell receptors. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, but if you click on the links provided, and I know I said that in my last video on antigen recognition, but if you click on the links, you can look at the somatic recombination from the progenitor T cell to the naive T cell um, and how this increases the specificity and diversity of the T cell receptors. And also you can click on the link of the somatic recombination from the progenitor B cell to the immature B cell and how this increases the uh, diversity and specificity of the antibodies also known as the VDJ recombination. Also in the lymph nodes you can click on the link on somatic hypermutation and how this increases the affinity and diversity of the antibodies once again so that it binds to a specific type of antigen and also on class switching and clonal expansion how the B cells differentiate into the B memory cells or the plasma cells. Hope you enjoyed this video. Please like, comment and share. Thank you.